If you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe and press that bell icon to get notified on every new upload. Hey everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to study about the dentigerous cyst. So I have two images for you here. Can you tell me the difference between the image 1 and the image 2? I know you must have played this game find the difference when you were small. I also played by the way. So let us see what difference we find between these two images. So in the image 1, we see an impacted third molar. Here also we have an impacted third molar. And we have blue line here. We also have a blue line here. And that blue line by the way, this, this is the reduced enamel epithelium. Okay. But the difference between these two is that here the distance between this blue line and this black line is little more. So the distance is more means the space between them has increased and that is the formation of cyst here. So this is progressing towards the formation of cyst or cyst has already formed you can say. So why does the space increase? Some tragedy might have happened isn't it? So that tragedy is the fluid accumulation between the reduced normal epithelium and the crown. Okay, and you can notice here that this blue line, it is attached to the tooth here and here. This is the cemento enamel junction. So this is what a dentigerous cyst is. So we learn that a dentigerous cyst is a cyst that originates by the separation of the reduced normal epithelium and the crown of an unerupted tooth and is attached to the crown of an unerupted tooth at the CEJ. So always keep in mind three terms. We have an unerupted tooth, we have separation and we have a CEJ. So these three points will help you remember the definition of dentigerous cyst. Alright, let's move on. Now I have another question for you. Why do we give nicknames to people, be it our friends or enemies? For example, I have one friend and I would like to call her Hariyali because she loves green color. She always wears green color. That is why. Okay. So, our dentigerous cyst also has been given two nicknames. One of them is the follicular cyst, follicular cyst. And the other name is pericoronal cyst, pericoronal cyst. All right. Follicular, because remember this blue line separated. So, we have the separation of the follicle. That is why it is called as follicular. And pericoronal because it was attached to the crown at the CEJ. That means it is kind of surrounding the crown. That is why pericoronal. So we have two nicknames for the dentigerous cyst. So the question can be twisted in examination and you could be asked about follicular cyst instead of dentigerous cyst. So just keep that in mind. This is the old age tricks by our teachers. They twist the name and give the same question and by the way there are some students also who write the same answer no matter what question has been asked so this is the, so this is kind of balance between the teachers and the students we have anyways let's move on let's talk about the pathogenesis now why does it occur so if you were attentive enough till now we have already covered the pathogenesis that is the accumulation of fluid so mostly these are developmental in origin we studied that there was a tooth here which was impacted and there was our RER and fluid accumulated in between. So the size will increase from here to here let's say and the fluid is all around. So this is the pathogenesis and uh, we say that it is developmental in origin but let me just clear it out. There are also examples when they seem to have an inflammatory origin. So we have two examples here. This is the example number one. So in this example, we see that we have a primary teeth and that primary teeth is kind of crying because it has infection, which is the periapical infection. And because of this infection, this permanent tooth, which is lying below it, it is at risk. Why is it at risk? Because this infection, this will move on here and this will lead to accumulation of fluid inside this and the formation of dentigerous cyst will happen. So this is an example of formation of dentigerous cyst due to infection. Let's see another example. This is example number two. 
So what you find here, this is partially unerupted tooth, unerupted third molar to be precise. So cyst occurring in this case is usually because of the inflammation which is associated with recurrent pericoronitis. So we all know we have tissues surrounding this tooth. All right. So the infection of this tooth is pericoronitis and when this pericoronitis occurs again and again this will lead to the formation of cyst so this is also an inflammatory origin so this wasn't short about the pathogenesis we learned that it is mainly developmental but it could also have inflammatory origin as we have seen in some examples right now let's have a look at the clinical features clinical features so i would say that the dentigerous cyst is a perfect marriage material. It is a perfect marriage material. I say this because the age range is 10 to 30 years and it has male predilection and occurs more often in white. So we have white male 10 to 30 years a perfect marriage material isn't it girls so those men who are into fair and lovely fairness cream kindly beware <laughs> kidding no relation between fairness cream and dentigerous cyst by the way however it's true that the prevalence is higher for whites so the age is 10 to 30 years male and white and in clinical feature obviously we'll keep in mind that it occurs in uninterrupted tooth but the question is any uninterrupted tooth or some specific uninterrupted tooth so we have a sequence for it so let us see the sequence here so this is our sequence so we have most often they involve the mandibular third molar because this is the tooth which is most often impacted and then we have the maxillary cuspid and then we have the maxillary third molar and then we have the mandibular second premolar and they could also be associated with supernumerary teeth that is the extra of the bonus teeth God has given us. Okay. Let's come to the symptoms now. Symptoms. So what will the patient tell you? So it could be small. Or it could be large. It could be painless. Or it could be painful. So the small dentigerous cysts, they are usually asymptomatic and they are discovered by chance. Means the patient will come to you for, let's say, some other problem, some other problem. And you took a radiograph of the patient and you find that, accidentally you find that he has a dentigerous cyst also. So that is the case when we have small lesions. So the patient in this case will have no idea, means no complaints or no symptoms associated with this cyst the problem will be something else if the dentigerous cyst is large it will expand the bone causing facial asymmetry but it will still be painless so painless is the normal characteristic of dentigerous cyst it gets painful only when it is infected so whether it is small or large, it will be painless. But if it is painful, that means it is infected. And by the way, large dentigerous cyst is uncommon. So this thing, this thing is uncommon. You won't find dentigerous cyst that is large. You won't often find. This is very rare. So there would be times when in radiograph you'll feel that, oh my God, this is a large dentigerous cyst. But eventually on further investigation, you'll come to know that it is odontogenic cyst or ameloblastoma. So to summarize the clinical feature, we have a perfect marriage material. The age is 10 to 30 years, male, white, all right, mostly in third molar. It could be small, large, painless, painful. Now let's come to the radiographic diagnosis or radiographic investigation. So in radiograph, usually this cyst will appear unilocular. You can see a single cavity here. So it will appear unilocular. Just one radiolucent cavity. The radiolucency is well defined. You can see here. 
and often has a sclerotic border you can see this white faint line going throughout this is the sclerotic border but if it is infected it will have ill-defined border so let us see an image here so in this we have two things small uninfected and small infected so if the cyst is small and is uninfected we'll find well-defined border but if the cyst is small but infected it will have ill-defined border you can see the borders are ill-defined now if the cyst is large how will it appear in radiograph so in radiograph large cyst will seem to be multilocular it will appear multilocular because of the presence of bony trabeculae all right but you know what they are unilocular only and never truly multilocular now if we come across many radiographs of dentigenous cyst for example you have 100 200 radiographs of patient you will find some pattern means there will be a cyst and crown relationship so we have three kinds of pattern or you can say three kinds of radiographic tendency so we have the central variety the lateral variety and the circumferential variety so in the central variety you can see that the crown is symmetrically inside the cyst all right and the lateral you find that the cyst is enlarged on the lateral side and the circumferential you can see you can see that the lining is more towards the root surface so this is the cj and the bulge is more towards the root so this is the circumferential variety we should also keep in mind that cyst may displace or push the involved tooth to a considerable distance this is our cyst it will have potential to push this teeth or displace this teeth to a considerable distance for example uh, if this is a mandible and the teeth is here and the cyst is here i just interchange the color doesn't matter so uh, sometimes what will happen so sometimes the tooth could be shifted to the ascending ramus also and uh, this cyst also has potential to resorb the roots of the adjacent teeth so we have adjacent teeth here it has potential to resorb the roots of the adjacent teeth so remember these two words here displace and resorption ab itna matha pachi karne ke baad let me tell you that the radiographic findings are not diagnostic means you cannot see a radiograph and be very sure that it is a dentigerous cyst and to be sure we'll do histopathological investigation so why are radiographic investigations not diagnostic this is because in x-ray many cysts and tumors look like dentigerous cysts so there could be tumors some tumors or some other cyst which look like the dentigerous cyst in the radiograph but they are actually not we can even get confused between an enlarged follicle and a dentigerous cyst so i have two question here which is pretty much the same question which one is a dentigerous cyst and which one is an enlarged follicle some investigators say if the diameter is 3 to 4 mm or more it is a dentigerous cyst so if it is 3 to 4 mm or more it is a dentigerous cyst and if it is less than that it is an enlarged follicle and not a cyst so this could also be a radiographic challenge for you you can just see an enlarged follicle and you can feel like it's a dentigerous cyst but it's not now let's come to the histopath for histopath we'll have two histopath one for the whoops infected and other for the uninfected let's first see the uninfected one so in the uninfected dentigerous cyst you can find the epithelium which is flat means there are no red apex here and it is 3 to 4 layer we have connective tissue that has loosely arranged fibers we have epithelial rests in the infected dentigerous cyst we can find the epithelium which is having more number of cells means we have hyperplasia and this is keratinized the epithelium is keratinized while in the uninfected one the epithelium was non keratinized and we have these orange things here these are rushton bodies what are rushton bodies people say that they have hematogenous origin means they arise from blood components and little is known why they appear here and we have red apex also in case of infection 
Here you can see the connective tissue is more collagenized and we have inflammatory cells. Let's come to treatment now. Treatment. So we studied that we had two kinds of cysts. One was large and other was small. So if the cyst is small, we'll do enucleation. Enucleation along with the removal of unerupted tooth. But if the cyst is large, we'll do something which is called as marsupialization. Marsupialization. I hope I'm writing the spelling right. Marsupialization. So what we do here, in this, we see a cyst and this is the surface, this is the external surface. What we do, we cut the cyst and suture it with the outside. So we join the orange with the blue line, means we are suturing it with the outside surface. So this will kind of open the cyst and there will be open drainage. Okay. So when the drainage is open, this will lead to decompression of the cyst. The cyst will become smaller in size. Decompression. So when there is decompression, the bone which is surrounding this cyst, which is already resolved, it will start to form again. And when it happens, the defect, the size of defect will reduce. So if the cyst was this much large, it will by the time become this much large, means it will get smaller. And then what we can do, we can surgically remove it. Right? Ending the lecture with prognosis. The prognosis is excellent and the recurrence is seldom. And dentigerous cyst may also undergo neoplastic transformation. Neoplastic transformation into amyloblastoma or SCC which is squamous cell carcinoma. So I hope you like the video. Please don't forget to give a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and please, please, please share the video to help us reach more students. Allah Fiz.